Let's learn how to draw Pascal's triangle. Now to draw Pascal's triangle, the first thing we do is write three ones in a triangular pattern like I'm doing here. Notice this is a triangular pattern as we can imagine these ones at the vertices of a triangle. Now those are the first two rows of Pascal's triangle. For the other rows, here's how to write them. Starting from the second row here, we do one plus one. Well, 1 plus 1 equals to 2, and we write that 2 on the next row of Pascal's triangle in between the two ones that are above it. We then complete the row, keeping the triangular shape of our pattern. And we carry on this way to construct the fourth row. So, starting from the far left-hand side of the third row, we have 1, which we add to 2. Now, 1 plus 2 is 3, and we write the 3 on the next row in between the 1 and 2 above it. We carry on, we have 2 which we add to 1. Again, 2 plus 1 equals to 3, and we write that on the next row in between the 2 and the 1. And we now complete that row, carrying on with our triangular pattern. And we carry on this way. To construct the fifth row, we start on the far left hand side of the fourth row, so that's 1, and we add to that 3. Now 1 plus 3 is 4. So we write that on the next row in between the 1 and the 3. We carry on, we have 3 plus 3 which is equal to 6, which we write on the next row in between the two 3s. And finally, we have 3 plus 1, which equals to 4, and we add that on the next row below it. And finally, we add 1s to the end of each row, keeping that triangular pattern. We carry on that way. For the next row, we have 1 plus 4, which is 5, 4 plus 6, which is 10, 6 plus 4, which is 10 again, and 4 plus 1, which is 5. And we complete the row with 1s. And we could go on forever this way, there's no end to Pascal's triangle. Indeed, I could add the next three rows as follows. And there we go. And so that's how we draw Pascal's triangle. Now, in our next tutorial, we'll learn how to actually use this Pascal's triangle to quickly find binomial coefficients for binomial expansions. For now though, let me finish this tutorial by pointing out something rather important. If I were to draw a vertical line going straight through the middle of this Pascal's triangle, we notice that for any one row of this Pascal's triangle, the values that we see on either side of the line are the mirror images of each other. Now that's going to become very useful when calculating binomial coefficients later on. But do just spend a few seconds to convince yourself of that statement. For any one row on Pascal's triangle, the values that we see are the mirror images of each other across that middle line. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.